Duxton Broad Acre Farms is 51,000 acres of land just outside of Forbes. It's an agglomeration of farms that basically are mixed cropping, a little bit of cotton, a little bit of irrigation, about 10% irrigation, and uh, it's probably some of the most mispriced land in Australia. Um, in terms of, of what we're doing and why we're doing it, we're going to bring this to the market. We're not taking money off the table. We're looking to raise a little bit more money to reinvest in some more land in the area. The first thing, the most important thing is, our land here in Australia is some of the cheapest grain land in the world. Australia is cheap on the global stage, and Forbes and the aggregation on the western slopes is some of the cheapest land in the country. Now, we've had a series of things that happened to the Australian farmer that's led for us to lag global prices. Our dollar doubled about 10 years ago from 55 cents to over a dollar 10. We then had a great drought. We then had a financial crisis. We then had grain prices collapse to where they are right now. Since Jesus Christ walked this planet, Grain prices, adjusted for inflation, have never been lower. That's a fun thing. Because if you can make money at an all-time low, think of what happens if you see a recovery in those grain prices. Now, I want you to think about one other thing. Why? Why did those grain prices get to an all-time low? In the last five years, we've had three times globally where we've had one in 500 year events. And we had one in 500 year crops three times. Big crops. We had one very good year and one okay year. That excess supply drove down our prices. When you think about that, it's one in 500 chance any one year we're going to get that. So to have three of them in that short of a period of time is exceptionally low chances. If we see that recovery in grain prices, for us who makes a profit at the all-time low, we should see some very, very pleasant earnings. So one of the things that makes us fairly unique is we are one of the lowest cost producers of grain in the country. Um, Tony Hamilton, who's our MD, he's a scientist. He's a scientist who also understands financial numbers. So when we're looking at what we're doing, everything we do, we look at the cost and the benefit and what's best in class science. On our farms in our region, we're one of the very first people to bring in pulses and chickpeas. Tony was one of the very first people, or the first person to bring into the Lachlan Valley cotton, which we've been running for the last three years. In fact, we won the prize in New South Wales for the highest yield and highest quality. But Tony brings something else. As one of the best in class farmers in the area, focused on costs, when you take a look at where we sit, our per ton cost of production puts us in the upper decile, top 10% of Australian farmers. Very few people can get into that space. So from our side, the management team also brings not just the fact that we've got inexpensive land or well-bought land, we're at the bottom of the cycle, but we've also got a team that activates that, creates change on that land, improves that land, and adds value to that land. Duxton Capital is, um, it, we're an asset manager that thinks a little bit differently than most people. Uh, we try and run scenarios on pretty much anything that can happen in the economy and then position ourselves in front of that. And because we've been doing that for the last now almost 10 years and always thinking what could be next, what, what stories, what parts of the economy should do well as the next five, six, seven, eight years unfold. One of the big things that Duxton brings to the table is that we look at trying to aggregate all our purchasing costs, all our operations, to drive down costs across everything. If I can go in and negotiate as one of the biggest buyers of fertilizer in the country, 
I'm not getting a 10% discount. I'm getting much, much deeper discounts. For us, half of the value we have is taking our costs aggressively down uh, across the boards, but not skimping on quality. Um, the board is man a mixture of different skill sets. Um, we've got Wade Davenant, who's uh, a farmer himself, so he's got a pretty wide brief. Um, he sits, uh, uh, he's basically chairman of the board of the uh, South Australian um, uh, Grains Organization, the Governmental Grains Organization. We've also got Mark Harvey. Mark Harvey's on the board of a large seed company. His family's been doing broad acre for five generations. He himself did 20 years of broad acre farming. For him, he's exceptionally excited about this. He, uh, he rambles on about this being the cheapest thing he's seen in 40 years of farming. We've then got f more people who are more financially based, like myself, who are very concerned about the setup of our balance sheet, thinking about uh, what our cost of debt is, how we do our purchasing, and how we drive down costs. We're going to pay down a little bit of debt because we've just bought uh, uh, an aggregation. If we get the upper end of the, of the range, we're going to buy a couple more farms uh, within the same area at this point in time, just because we think it's truly mispriced against Australia. Um, and for us, that gives us some, some nice synergies, additional cost savings on the overall portfolio. Um, the board is very, very conservative in terms of debt and not wanting to have debt. We've been very clear that we don't want to have over 20% debt as a normal course of business. And at the lower end of our raise, we'll have under 20% net gearing. At the upper end, we'll have none, but we'll spend a little bit of money by bringing in one or two more farms, but we'll keep it well under the 20%.